So you've heard you can teach English online without a degree or without previous teaching experience. But then you hear things like, use more TPR, adjust to their learning level, speak more slowly, not that slowly, use props, be more enthusiastic. It's not a show, make sure you're teaching them. There are a lot of tips and advice out there that might leave you feeling a little overwhelmed and very unqualified. But here's the thing, it doesn't have to be that hard and you are probably more qualified than you think. I'm here to argue that you may be an amazing ESL teacher if one, you speak English, two, you like people, three, you know how to put yourself in someone else's shoes, and four, you know how to build a block tower. What are you talking about, Brittany? Hang with me for a few minutes and I will show you. Let's do this. Hey guys, Brittany Charay here. I am a Christ follower, a wife, a mother to three littles, and an expat in Guatemala who also happens to teach ESL online. And I am here to inspire, train, and equip some of you to do the same. If you are still watching, you are either intrigued by this fascinating human and her weird ways, or you are truly interested in knowing if you have what it takes to teach ESL online. When you hear the word teacher, it can be a little intimidating, especially if you don't have a degree in education. But let's hop over to a dictionary and read the definition of teacher. Teacher, a person who teaches, especially in a school. All right, all right, so it's one who teaches. So what's the definition of teach? Teach, show or explain to someone how to do something. Hmm, so it seems that degree is not part of the definition. So what about the teaching part? How does one know how to teach unless they have training in it? Well, it may not be as hard as you think. All right, as I mentioned before, I have a list of a few things that I believe are non-negotiables for a good teacher and things that if you already have them, may be a good indication that you already are one. Now let me walk you through those in a little more detail. Number one, you really do need to know how to speak English, but considering that's a requirement for any English teaching platform, you should be good to go on that one. And if so, then you are already a content expert. What wonderful news. That is not to say that you know all there is to know or that you will never have to learn or grow because that is not the case. But if you speak English fluently, then you already are an expert as far as English language skills go. And being a content expert is a wonderful place for a teacher to start. Now, not all would agree with me on this one, but I would say that in order to be a good teacher, you really do need to like people. Do you need to like all people? No. People in general? Probably. This is both for the sake of your student, who will likely know if you are faking it, and for your own sake, as you will likely be driven to insanity if you spend hours teaching humans with whom you have no personal connection. Just a little something to keep in mind. Three, you can put yourself in someone else's shoes. Now, some would think that this ties in directly to number two, but I know a lot of people that like people, but they really don't know how to put themselves in someone else's shoes. Why is this important? because being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes allows you to adjust your teaching to your student's need at the time. If you've never heard this before, there are multiple teaching styles and learning styles. I won't go into the details of that right now because I don't want to overwhelm you. And the point of this video is to show you that you can teach well without having all of that background or training. So I will just tell you that if you are able to recognize what your student might be thinking and feeling, you will naturally make the adjustments that you need to, to keep them going in their learning and in their education. For example, if you see that your student is very shy or intimidated by the content, 
you will naturally pull back a little bit. You might focus on something more simple for a few minutes in order to make him or her feel more comfortable and come out of their shell, find a little bit more success on their own. On the other hand, if you see a student is bored and disinterested, you might try to speed up the pace of the class or add in some additional challenges. But these are natural responses that we have when we notice how another person is responding. This is actually something that we do in day-to-day -day life in conversations or day-to-day -day activities. So it's not just something you do as a teacher, but those skills will help you as one. Another specific example that is really important for teaching English is that we need to understand how a new language learner might be feeling or processing information. If you have learned a language other than your native language, then you understand and likely you will know how to respond to your student's need because you have been in that situation before. This is not always the case, but it certainly gives you the upper ground on being able to see things from your student's perspective. I am actually going to be doing a future video series on this very thing, but for now, let me just give you a brief example through demonstration. This will only work if you do not already speak Spanish. If you do, I'm sorry. Hopefully, if you speak Spanish, then that means that you have been on the side of learning a language, either of Spanish or English. But if not, well, use your imagination for now. And when I become fluent in another language, I will do another example for you. <laughs> now, listen to this poor example of a teacher beginning a class with a new student who does not have a Spanish background. Hola, mi amo Brittany. Soy tu maestra. ¿Y cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Qué tal? No me entiendes, ¿verdad? Hay que decir algo. All right, if you have no background in Spanish, then that probably sounded like nonsense, even if you know some of those words. Now look at this example of how a teacher might teach if they know what it feels like to be that lost. Hola, hola, me llamo Brittany, Brittany, y tú, ¿cómo te llamas? Brittany? Sara, hola Sara, ¿cómo estás? ¿Estás bien o estás mal? Bien, estoy bien, estoy bien. Muy bien, ¿y cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos años tienes? Happy birthday to you. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Cinco. Muy bien. Okay, I have tried changing angles multiple times because of the wind, and I don't think we have a way around it. I will get my microphone one day. In the meantime, can you just hold on? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So by watching these two, does anything jump out to you immediately about the ways that different teachers are teaching? In the first example, we see a teacher who is speaking very casually, maybe as she would with a friend who already speaks Spanish. In the second example, we see a teacher who is working to do everything she can to tie meaning into the words that she is saying. She is assuming that her student has no previous understanding of the words that she is saying, and so she is feeding them as much information as she can to help them make that connection. Now picture a dictionary. When you want to know the meaning of a word, you pull out a dictionary, find the word, and read the definition beside it. When you're learning a new language, you could use a dual language dictionary to find the exact word you're looking for. But studies have shown that people learn languages best through immersion, which is when they are thrown into a context where the language that they need to learn is the only one being spoken. Then out of necessity, the learner is picking up on the definition on their own through visual and situational clues. Basically, a new language learner is filling out the definition part of their dictionary 
through these clues, through the things that they see and feel and need, they are finding the definition on their own. We hang on to that information better if we've gathered it on our own, as opposed to memorizing a list of things that is handed to us. So this is essentially what a lot of ESL platforms are trying to do. But the disadvantage in an online classroom is that you are not on the go interacting with your environment. So there are not as many clues to feed what you are saying. So a teacher who is more sensitive to his or her student's needs is naturally going to provide an environment and experience that is going to enable them to form those connections. This can be through props, facial expressions, body language, vocal changes, and more. But if you are able to put yourself in your student's shoes, these things are going to come naturally. You won't have to sit there with a checklist trying to make sure that you include each of these things. And that brings me to the fourth point. Do you know how to build a block tower? I know it sounds crazy, but I really think that this is one of the best illustrations for what I'm trying to tell you. And it also helps to give you a visual for a word that can be intimidating that is found in both construction and education, and that is scaffolding. Instead of defining that word for you, I'm just going to show you. When building a tower, you start from the bottom. Crazy, right? And you slowly build one block on top of the other. As you go, you intentionally place each block in a balanced fashion, one on top of the other. If you lay it down and realize that it's not in the right position, you adjust it, you tweak, and then you keep going. As the tower starts to get taller, you might notice that it starts to wobble. And so you retrace your steps and you find which block might be off. You adjust until it seems steady again and you keep going. If at any point it looks like it's about to fall, you might put your hand against the tower to steady it and you don't let go until you're sure it is ready to stand on its own. You may be holding it with your hand. You start to let go thinking that you've made the needed adjustments. It starts to wobble again, so you grab it. You do what you need to do until it's able to stand on its own again. Brittany, why are we talking about building a block tower? I've known how to do that since I was little. I know you do, and I know you can, and so that's why I believe you can teach. I really believe it's the same thing in education. Let's backtrack. One, you are an expert in the content, which essentially is saying that you already have the blocks ready to go. Many ESL platforms even have a curriculum, which is basically them handing you the blocks in order with instructions on how to build the tower that they have predetermined. Two, you like your student, so you are invested in building this tower, which is your student's English skills, and this gives you the motivation and patience that you need to get there. Three, you can put yourself in your students' shoes. So you know where they are and where they need to be, and you have a set of reasonable expectations and methods to help get them there. Four, you know how to build a block tower, so you know how to start from the bottom, build on what they know, make adjustments as needed, steady them when they need some extra help or assistance, and only letting go when they're ready to stand on their own. Ta-da! Is it really this simple? Yes and no. I really do believe that this is what you need to start. I believe it gives you a great foundation, but every teacher always has room for growth. So you really need to see yourself as a block tower, even as you are helping build your students' language skills tower. Does that make sense? <laughs> so you are going to build on yourself as you go. There is going to be some trial and error and each student is different, each teacher is different, so there's going to be tweaking and balancing and wobbling and steadying as you go, but you're gonna get there, and I really believe that this is all you need to start. There is so much more that I could say on this, so at a later date, I plan to make a series talking about the ESL teaching strategies and how it ties in directly to this illustration, but for now, how does this make you feel? Are you encouraged by it? Are you skeptical? I'm excited about it. I think it's great. I, I'm truly excited. I don't know if that carries over in this short video or not, but I do really want to inspire people who just don't believe that they have what it takes because I think that you do. Put it to the test, I dare you. If you think you would hate it, fine. Then find something else that is great for you. But I am saying if you think that you would enjoy it, but you think you're not qualified, then you are probably wrong.
That's good news. That's good news. Anyway, if you have questions, if you have doubts, please put them in the comment below or send me an email if you're not excited to put that out for others to read. And I would love to talk with you about that more. If you found this video helpful, can you go ahead and like this video and subscribe? I would love to have you join me for future videos. As I said, I am going to be coming back to this specific topic in the future. For now, I'm going to take a little break because I've had multiple requests to do videos on the application process for cowfish. So that is what will be coming in the next few weeks. But I do plan to return to this one at a later date. I also would love your feedback on what you would like to hear. Does this topic appeal to you? Because I love it, but these videos are not for me. That would be a waste. So let me know what you're needing to hear so that I can make my plan for my videos accordingly. And guys, I mentioned this in my last video, but I did make a free PDF guide for any of you who are interested in teaching ESL online. This is not just for those who are interested in Palfish. This is for those of you who need to choose a platform and just wanna get started. It's to help you take those first few steps to get you moving in the right direction. So if you're interested, I have that link down in the description box. You can grab that PDF and get started. And please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to walk with you through that. All right, I think that's it for today. I hope to see you next week. Until then.